Hey guys, welcome back to Word of a Dice TV, where your time is invested and not wasted. Today I want to go over a water heater. I firmly believe that owners should know their appliances, and today I just want to go over the water heater, how it works, what each component does, and by the time this video is over, you're probably going to know a lot more about this than you ever wanted to know. What we have here is an A.O. Smith 40 gallon gas water heater, and this is a very standard unit. A lot of houses will have something very similar to this. So I think we'll start from the top and work our way down and explain what everything does. So on top here, sometimes they'll have red and blue. Other times these covers won't be here. As you can see, they're a little bit melted from the times when there was a little bit of a backdraft. So the venting fumes, instead of going out the chimney, kind of went backwards a little bit. If these are completely melted, then you have a clogged flue problem and you should probably get that cleaned or replaced or something because these shouldn't be completely melted off. If they're just a little rippled like this, that's no big deal. Mine's not even attached anymore. And then there's the blue one on this side. And usually you'll have cold and hot labeled right on the water heater. If it's not there, that's okay. At least the hot side should be labeled. And then always your cold line going up will have a shut off. So if we go on this side, right here we got the shut off. It's usually right above the water heater on the cold line. You have the water shut off coming to the water heater. Maybe it's gonna be a little further up the line, but it's always on the cold side. The hot side typically will not have a shut off on it. And over here, we got the gas shut off to the water heater as well. If you trace the line down, it goes right into the gas valve there. And if you ever needed to replace the gas valve, you would break this union right here, after you shut the gas off, of course. Break the union, take apart the gas piping, and then replace the gas valve right there. And this cold water supply coming in from the city, which is about 60 PSI, by the way, that goes into here. And on the cold side, there's a plastic dip tube, which screws on right on the bottom of this uh, nut right here. And it goes down to the bottom of your tank. It's a long plastic tube that goes to the bottom. And what that does is the new cold water that's coming in, it pushes it down to the bottom where the burner is, which tells the burner, hey, we have cold water here now, and turns the burner on. Also, it helps circulate the water. And this hot side right here doesn't have a tube. It's just like a little hole right here. And with the 60 PSI city pressure, it's pushing that hot water out. And since hot water naturally rises and cold water sinks, this works very well. The dip tube pushes the cold down and the hot water goes up, essentially using up the hot water first before you get the cold. And then there's one more thing. Um, there's an anode rod. Some water heaters will not have an anode rod. This one does. There's an anode rod that sticks into the water heater. All you can see is the tip of it, the nut right there. You would just put a wrench on it to take it off. Um, and what that does is it's a rod that goes down into the water heater. It's pretty long usually. And that is a sacrificial either magnesium or aluminum rod. So instead of the corrosion from the water attacking the water heater tank itself, it will corrode the sacrificial anode rod instead, prolonging the life of your unit. They say this should be replaced every year. I don't really know anybody that ever does that. <laughs> to be honest, I've never replaced mine. This water heater tank is 2003 and it's still going good. A lot of times when this will completely wear out, all you'll have is a wire left on it. Actually, technically, if there's any exposed wire, <clears throat> I should back up. The anode rod is basically a bunch of magnesium on a steel wire. If you see any bare steel wire, that means you need to replace the whole rod. So, you know, you don't have to replace the darn thing every year, but you could at least take it out and take a look at it as maintenance. And then here we got the chimney that's attached to the water heater. That just goes right on top. It's either going to be a three inch or two inch. And then you got the vent cover right here. And it's open draft. That means if your vent is ever clogged or there's like a bird nest in there or something, it'll literally vent backwards. This one doesn't have any safety features that um, will stop it. Therefore, uh, these rings, if they're completely melted, like I mentioned before, that's a bad thing. You probably have carbon monoxide in the house. Doesn't happen very often, but it does. And then inside the water heater itself, uh, there's a circular tube that's called a baffle. And it's just metals going this way and this way and this way and this way. That way when the heat travels up, it goes like this. Basically what it's there for is it causes the hot air coming from the burner to stay inside the water heater longer to heat up the water more before it goes out the flue. Next we have the pressure relief valve right here with a spring lever. Manufacturer recommends yanking this thing every couple months to make sure that it works. Honestly, I've never yanked mine before because the more you open this and close it, the more chances you have of this thing starting to leak. 
Uh, but what it's there for, it's a pressure relief. It's a safety device. So for example, if your burner ever fails to turn off, it just stays on and it keeps heating the water, heating the water, eventually it'll turn into steam and steam is very explosive. So once you build up enough steam, this water heater will fly out your roof. Nobody wants that. So we have these things, pressure relief valve. It has a tube that sticks into the water heater. And if it ever senses that the temperature is too hot, this thing will spring open, it's pressure activated and the water, hot water will come spewing out this directional pipe, this copper pipe. And all this is, is just a directional pipe. You can take this pipe off right here. This is not part of the device. And if you don't have this directional pipe going downwards, it is code and you should have one because if somebody's standing next to it and this thing springs open, usually the water coming out of here will be scalding hot. And it's going to be one heck of an unpleasant warm shower for you. So that's the pressure relief valve. And down here we have the drain valve. Mine is brass. Sometimes they're plastic. And if you ever have to replace it, the plastic ones usually break off when you try to unscrew them. And you got a little flood out there. Hopefully that never happens to you. Um, usually there's a spigot on here. Uh, mine is gone. I have no idea where it is. I can just put a, put a flat head screwdriver in here and tighten that up though. Or loosen it up or open it or whatever. The manufacturer recommends draining or flushing your water heater every year, once or twice a year. Honestly, I've never flushed mine at all. It's 2003 and it seems to be working just great. And to put it into perspective, I've seen a 40 year old water heater that worked great and it's never been flushed even once. So do you have to flush it? It's recommended, but I don't think you have to really. I never flushed mine. And just like the pressure relief valve, you're increasing your chances of this thing starting to leak and you having to replace this as well. So I just don't touch it. And next up we have the gas valve. The gas valve will typically have three settings on it. The newer models will have automatic ignition and stuff like that. This one has on on this side, pilot and off. Right now my water heater is on. If you switch it to pilot, only the pilot light will stay on and the burner will not stay on. And off of course just turns the whole thing off. On this side you have a sparker. Not all, not all water heaters will have this, but a lot of them do. And this sparker is on a clip that can just come out like that. Very easy and you can unplug it right here. If you ever needed to replace this, it's just a little piece like that. It even has the part number on the sticker on it. And all that does is make a spark to ignite that pilot light. And if your pilot ever goes out, usually the instructions on how to light it will be right on the water heater itself. As you can see right there, it tells you step by step by step what to do, how to relight your water heater if it goes out. Although typically if the pilot goes out, there's usually something else going on besides that. But, you know, first of all, you want to relight it and see how long it lasts, just to be sure. And then right here we have the temperature control. And this is literally like a thermostat on your wall for the furnace. You can control the temperature of your hot water uh, by switching this. As you can see, mine is set to very hot because my wife runs out of hot water all the time. Um, that's not very cost effective, but it works. This is typically at about 150, 160 degrees. So the water in here is pretty darn hot. Uh, the arrow is the default. That's about 120. Um, if you're lucky, some of the water heaters will actually have the temperature listed instead of all these ABCs. And typically it goes 120 and then by increments of 10. So this would be 130, 40, 50, 60. And don't be afraid to move this. If you feel like your water's not hot enough, you can always come down here and increase the temperature a little bit. If you think it's too hot or you have kids that are coming over or something, you can always decrease the temperature so the water's not as hot if they turn on the hot water alone. And if you look at the bottom of the water heater, uh, we have the thermocouple right here. Some of the newer water heaters will have a flame sensor. If you see a copper wire coming from your gas valve, you have a thermocouple for sure. And then on the other side, you have the pilot valve which is a thin hollow tube inside where there's a small amount of gas that goes through. And then this right here is the main gas line that goes to the burner. And most water heaters will have a burner cover right in front that usually is very easy to take off or it might have a screw or something, but you could take that off pretty easily. Mine is a sealed combustion, which means that, you know, the burner is completely sealed off. Some of them will have a little door that you can just open up and you can see inside there. Mine just has a sight glass. You could shine in there with the flashlight, see if your pilot light is on. That's what that sight glass is there for. Um, also, mine has a little screen in the bottom here, which I've never cleaned, but you really should. As you can see, there's a bunch of spider webs and crap on there. Uh, that's just an intake screen. 
so no big chunks get into the water heater or not a lot of dust. And you can just brush this off or vacuum it, wash it. This should be cleaned on a regular basis, really, uh, when you're replacing your furnace filter or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, you clean that up and there's even handy little arrows right here that show you which way you should put it back in. And then that just goes right back in on the bottom. Some water heaters will have a screen like this that's flexible and it goes all around. It's like a big piece of screen tape that goes around the whole water heater. That too needs to be taken off and cleaned. So let's go ahead and take this whole burner assembly out so I can show you what that looks like and explain what the functions do. Uh, what you will need to do that in most cases is a 7 16 wrench, 3 8 uh, 3 quarter. I just use an adjustable crescent. And then the nuts that hold my burner door on are 3 8 and you, you could just use a wrench on that, but I'm lazy, so I use a drill. And I just use a deep socket drill bit, and I can take that off pretty easily. Now, before you do that, you do want to turn off your gas, or at least set it to pilot. In my case, I'll be taking the whole burner out, so I want it completely off. And this will shut off the gas right here. It won't go past here, so I can take the whole thing out without any gas fuming out. But if you're worried about it, you can turn the gas off up on top on that turn off. So I got the gas off and now we can pull this thing out. We'll start with the pilot valve. That comes out like that. And then the thermocouple. And then the main burner line, once you take the nut off, it just drops right down. Sometimes there's gonna be a flexible one, a flexible pipe. You can just bend that a little bit to get it out. So I got all three of these out. This is the pilot, uh, or this is the pilot tube. This is the thermocouple. And then we just gotta take these two nuts off. Like such. Oh, guys, by the way, if you don't have a flashlight like this, you should really get one. This thing is awesome. LEDs from this side, you can turn it into a normal flashlight. You got a hanger to hang it on stuff, a magnet here, a magnet here, and the darn thing swivels. Super awesome. Look at that. I use this thing at work every day, and if it ever breaks, I get a new one right away because this thing rocks. Anyways, we got the burner out. At, that, at this point, you can pull the burner tube down to take it out, and I already have the bolts out that hold it. I'll, all we have is the spark wire left. We can just unplug that right here, and now we can pull out the whole entire burner. Like such. All right, so here we have our main burner and on the side we have the pilot assembly. So mine is a little different. It has a fuse in it, a fusible link. If it ever gets too hot inside the burner chamber, this thing will open up or short out and you have to replace the whole pilot assembly if that happens. Um, not all water heaters have this, but this one does. And that goes in series with the thermocouple. And the thermo thermocouple is really just a safety device. Uh, what it's there for is to basically tell the water heater gas valve if there is a pilot light or not. So after this spark, which is this thing right here, after this thing sparks to the pilot hood, there's a little bit of gas that comes through the pilot tubing right here. After this thing turns on, sparks and turns on the little pilot light, this pilot light heats up this thermocouple. As you can see, it's white because there's a flame on it all the time. It heats up this thermocouple, and once it's hot enough, it sends a signal, essentially, to the gas valve telling it that, hey, we have a pilot light, the water heater is ready to be lit. That's when the main gas valve opens up, and you got gas that goes down this tube. It goes in through the bottom here, and then it fumes out through the top, and this is almost like a gas spreader. The gas spreads underneath here and comes out of all these holes and kind of lights up in a circular fashion right here. 
going right out your chimney, which is in the middle. So this is the burner assembly. And just briefly, we can take a look inside the water heater itself. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but I can stick my flashlight in there. That's the inside of the uh, burn. There's basically a burner chamber that's maybe, I don't know, five, six inches tall. And on mine, there's also an air intake screen, which is right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's basically a, it's a honeycomb looking air filter, which gets plugged up with time. And you have to take some compressed air and get in there and blow it all out. And the symptoms of that is, if you will have a pilot light that you light, and right when you let go of the button, the pilot light just chokes itself out right away, that usually means there's not enough intake air. If you just go in there and blow that out with some compressed air and just vacuum up the debris, most of the time that'll be enough to get you back up and going. And I believe A.O. Smith is the only one that has that honeycomb filter under here. So if you have like a Ream or a Richmond or some other brand, chances are you probably don't have that intake screen on the bottom there. So in summary, there's the burner chamber, which is about this big, right underneath the drain valve right here. <clears throat> drain valve right here and then you have the storage tank itself and this whole entire tank it goes it's in a couple layers there's you have the outer shell which is this thing that's just to make it look pretty behind the shell you have insulation all around and then under the insulation you actually have the inner tank if that inner tank ever springs a leak you need a new water heater that's not repairable and typically to put the burner back in there will be some kind of a slot where you have to put the end of the burner in. Uh, in my case, all I have to do is put the burner tube in the U-shape bracket inside there. And that's what holds it in the right place or the right position. So we'll go ahead and slide this guy back in. And then this is where the sight glass is helpful. When you're putting this thing back in, you can look inside and make sure that the burner is in the proper position. Okay guys, so we got the burner door back in. Uh, I was having a little trouble with the gasket because it was detached from the door itself and it was kind of falling down and not lining up. So I just put some sheet metal tape to hold it in place while I put that in and that seemed to work out well. Tighten down all these nuts so there's no gas leaking out. And that's all together. We can put this cover back on. Well, let's leave this off for now. Usually when you're relighting the pilot light, you'd be looking into a sight class to make sure it's lit and stays on. Um, in my case, I've done this enough where I could just kinda do it blindly. I'll show you what I mean by that. So you turn this knob to the pilot setting and when it's in the pilot setting, you can actually depress the button like that. So what you do is you press down this button and that begins the flow of gas into the pilot valve tubing right here, into that little pilot hood that you saw earlier. So we press this down and the gas is flowing into this little tube and here's the spark you just press this to make a spark to light that gas up usually if i'm not looking into the sight glass i just start clicking away and all that is is just a bunch of little sparks in fact i can even show you that watch this i don't know if the hey, let me turn the slide off So that's the spark. So essentially this little spark is going down all the way to that pilot hood and lighting that little amount of gas that's going down there. So let's plug this back in. And it does have a little bit of a sting. That's why you have this rubber thing on it. Plus so it's not sparking to the water heater casing or the gas valve. But if you have your hand here it might bite you a little bit. It's no big deal. It's not going to kill you. Okay. So anyways, you hold down the pilot and you just spark away unless you're looking down inside there if you're looking then once you see it lit you keep holding down this pilot valve uh, to allow the thermocouple time to heat up so after you hold that for about you know 20 30 seconds you can let it go and the pilot should stay on a standing pilot which means there's a little flame that always stays on on the bottom of the water heater 
And then when you switch it to on, usually you would hear a poof if your water was already cooled off. But since mine is already heated up to very hot, my burner is not gonna be coming on. So if we take the door off, let's see if my blind lighting worked. Let's see uh, if the camera could just look in there. Can you see a pilot light? And there you go, that pilot is lit. So you should always have that little standing pilot there. Although the newer model water heaters have a intermittent ignition pilot, which means that the pilot only turns on when there's a call for heat, when the main burner is about to turn on. Otherwise, it's always off. So let's put this door back on. And that really is all there is to know about the water heater. Well guys, that is all I had for water heater education today. I hope you found this video helpful and hopefully learned something today. If you have any questions about anything about the water heater, how it works, or something that's going on at your house, please do let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer you as soon as I can. And if you could share this video with your friends and family so they can be educated in their water heater as well, don't forget to mash that like button. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.